Let's try and set the record straight on Tesla's full self-driving. This is a controversial subject. It has been since the day the product was released and the division over just what this software is and what it does has grown to levels of all out war. Battle lines have been drawn in the sand. On one side, it's the most dangerous software ever written and will kill millions. On the other side, it's the future of transportation and a means to end senseless traffic fatalities for good. Obviously, they can't both be right. And honestly, it doesn't matter. The fact is that this software is out there in the world. It's available to anyone who's willing and able to put the money down. So we should at the very least understand what this thing is all about. And then you can make up your own mind, whether you like it or not. And I'm not going to judge you either way. What a concept. To begin, full self-driving is just a name that Tesla gives to their most advanced level of driver assist features. It's an optional upgrade to autopilot. And autopilot is Tesla's name for their advanced driver assist system or ADAS. Every car company has their own title for this same set of features. GM calls it Super Cruise, Ford calls it Blue Cruise, Honda calls it Sensing. Is autopilot a bit of an exaggeration? Maybe. I mean, airplanes have autopilot, but would anyone want to hop in a 747 and fly with no human in the cockpit? Full self-driving is a level above all of those option packages, because instead of just staying between the lines and not hitting anything, FSD will attempt to navigate the vehicle fully autonomously from point A to point B anywhere on the map in any location, like a full-on robot chauffeur, only the robot has to be constantly monitored by the human driver and actively prevented from occasionally causing destruction on city streets. Does the car self-drive? Yes. Is it full-time? No. But really, these are just product names. Tesla had to call them something, right? Are they the most descriptive or accurate names ever given to a feature? No. Does it really matter? Also, no. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. What does matter is the way that the vehicle goes about its self-driving duties, or attempted self-driving. This is using a software process called computer vision, or in its branded form, Tesla vision. You may have heard that Tesla removed all of the radar, lidar, and ultrasonic sensors from their vehicle lineup. That leaves only digital cameras remaining as the interface between the car and the outside world. So just like you and I, the car navigates the world solely based on what it can see through its eyes. In this case, the Tesla has eight eyes strategically positioned around the body of the vehicle. So it's already got a leg up on us humans in that regard. We'd previously made the assumption that the vision system was seeing in eight directions at once and reacting in real time, which in and of itself would be impressive. And that's how Tesla was previously running the system. That's probably how most other automakers are currently running their autonomous driving systems. But what we know now is that Tesla's full self-driving computer is taking those eight streams of video and merging them together into a single 360 degree image. Then the panoramic surround video is digitized into a three-dimensional vector space. This gives the computer a virtual world that it can navigate through, and one that is a perfect analog of the real world environment. The problem that Tesla identified with using eight single camera feeds was that nothing ever aligned properly. There were seams between the video feeds, lens distortions, differences in perspective, plus the fact that every Tesla car was built a little bit cockeyed in its own unique way. So we have eight cameras that are all reporting separately on their own incomplete view of the world. And then the FSD computer is trying to digitize those streams of information and plot them into the vector space, which is that digital representation of the world that we see on the car's screen when autopilot or full self-driving is active. If we look back now on the older videos of that vector space, you can see how jagged and jittery and nearsighted that representation really was. That's because nothing was ever lining up properly in the car's brain. 
And that explains why during FSD sessions in the past, the car would be pretty jerky and hesitant in tricky situations. Here's the way this works right now. We have eight cameras shooting at 1280 by 960 pixels in 12-bit HDR at 36 frames per second. The FSD computer is then taking all of those images and stitching them together into one single image, essentially taking eight cameras and making them into one. This is actually the same thing that is happening when you use the panorama mode on your camera app. You move the phone from side to side and as it moves, it's taking a series of individual shots. Then the computer in the phone takes those shots and lines them all up, chooses which parts of what photos are the best, and then it outputs one picture for you. And it doesn't look like 20 different pictures from 20 different camera positions. It looks like one shot taken by one camera. Another example of this kind of computational photography would be a 3D Matterport scan. If you've bought a house or even considered buying a house in the past two years, then you've definitely seen a 3D virtual tour of a house created by a Matterport scan. The Matterport camera spins around on a tripod and takes a series of photos that are all merged together into one 360 degree photographic representation that allows a viewer to move through the house and look around in any direction they want virtually. That's the process that Tesla's FSD computer is doing to create the single camera view. And it's doing this in real time with zero latency. The computer is recreating its 360 degree composite photo 36 times every second as new frames of video pour in from eight different inputs. So now, instead of looking straight out in eight different directions at once, the car is actually seeing one view from a top-down perspective, like a Google Earth satellite image. Now when we take that one seamless bird's eye view image and convert that into the vector space, we don't get a jagged, janky mess. We get very smooth, consistent lines that the car can drive through in a smooth and consistent manner. Then there's the idea that the camera is not just seeing in real time, but it's actually considering the past, present, and the future in the same moment. That means that when the camera's view is being temporarily blocked, like by cross traffic, the system isn't constantly losing and reacquiring those objects that are on the other side of the traffic flow it will remember what it saw there before the view was blocked and assume that those objects still exist even if they can't be seen. The spatial memory of FSD is much longer than that. This is the memory that keeps track of things like where the curbs are, what lines are on the road, what are the road signs saying. If the car drives over an arrow on the road as it approaches an intersection, it's going to keep that arrow in mind until it's cleared the intersection, even if that means stopping for a minute at a red light. Things like road marking and signs that appear 50 meters before a turn are going to be critically important to making predictions about how traffic will flow through the intersection. If the car just forgets these things once they're out of sight, then it would have to go back to a reaction-based driving, which leads back into that jerky, hesitant ride that we don't want. That leads us into how the car is seeing the future, or predicting the future, at least. For every object that appears in the vector space, the FSD computer is running a series of predictions for every course of action that the object might take. So, for every other car on the road, the system is not just reading distance and velocity, it's also making a list of possible actions that the car might take. And as the car gets closer and closer, the system is able to narrow down the list of possibilities until it has a very good guess about what move every other driver on the road is about to make. And then all of those possibilities and predictions are going to get mixed together with information from the road surface and the traffic lights and the traffic signs to inform the path that your car chooses to take through its environment. This decision-making process is powered by a series of artificial intelligence neural networks. And that's one part that kind of freaks people out. Tesla is taking all of that 360 degree video from real world driving scenarios and feeding it into an AI brain so that it can learn how to drive. By this point in 2023, most of us have at least experimented with an advanced artificial intelligence neural network, whether it's ChatGPT or one of the many new text-to-image generators. So we know that if you feed an AI a large enough data model to train on, you can make it shockingly intelligent. 
For example, ChatGPT was trained on how to write by being fed text databases straight from the internet. 570 gigabytes worth of text from ebooks, Wikipedia articles, blog posts, textbooks. In total, the system was fed 300 billion words. And if the AI is well trained enough, then as long as you give it the correct series of prompts, it can give you pretty near the exact output that you desire. Tesla is just trying to do the exact same thing with full self driving. The tricky thing here is that driving a car on public roads full of human drivers is a chaotic nightmare. Technically, there are rules of the road in theory, but in practice, those go completely out the window once you're trying to navigate through a major city in rush hour traffic. It's madness. So in order for full self-driving to follow through in its promise, it needs to be trained on every insane, unpredictable scenario that may arise. Think about the craziest thing you've ever seen happen on the road while driving. And then imagine trying to explain to a robot how to navigate that situation. It's a massive undertaking, and it's going to take a lot of time to reach a point where the AI can confidently deal with those edge cases. From everything that we've seen with their vehicle design over the past couple of years, we know that Tesla is already building their cars with autonomy in mind. This is true of every Tesla vehicle on the market today. The way Elon describes the functionality of the new cars is kind of like having an integrated robotic chauffeur. The car will just intuitively learn your habits over time and gradually reduce the amount of driver inputs down to zero. If you are the kind of person who drives to an office every day at the same time, then all you need to do is sit down and buckle your seatbelt and the car will autonomously bring you to work with not one single button press. If you're the kind of person who is constantly on the go, then your Tesla will sync with your digital calendar and will always know where you're going and when. So again, point A to point B without a single driver input. And at some point in the not so distant future, the legal obligation for the driver to actually watch the road and keep their hands on the wheel will just kind of disappear. I mean, why else did Tesla put an overpowered AMD Ryzen processor and RDNA 2 GPU into the infotainment system of every new car they sell? We've got PS5 level gaming capability in cars with extremely long range that will probably do 95% of their charging overnight in the owner's driveway. And we know that the system does not need anywhere near that much power to play Cat Quest and Cuphead. So, it's pretty obvious that Tesla has built this car today for a time when people will actually have the opportunity to kick back and play games in the front seat of their car while going about their daily activities at the same time. Wouldn't that be nice? And that's really what Tesla is selling when they give you the option to add full self-driving for 15 grand or whatever it is now. It's not so much the feature that you are getting today, but it's the idea that you are investing in the future of autonomous driving, putting money down now on what could someday be a reality. So do you think it's worthwhile or not? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.